Hello everyone. In this problem, we are given an array of integers and we need to find the maximum length of a subarray where the product of the elements in the subarray is positive. Let's go through a couple of examples. For this first example, we would return 5 because the longest subarray whose product is positive is the first five elements indexed from 0 to 4. In this next example, we would return 2 because the subarray of the last two elements, 6 and 5, is the longest. And in this third example, we would return 3 because the element indexed from 2 to 4 is the longest subarray with a positive product. Okay, now that you hopefully understand the problem, let's take a look at the brute force solution. The first solution iterates through every possible subarray in the array. There is an outer i for loop, which represents the left end of the subarray we are currently iterating on. And there is also a j index, which represents the right end. For each subarray, we update the current product and check if the product is positive. If it is, we check if the length of the current subarray is better than the longest positive subarray we have encountered in the past. And at the end of the solution, longest is the final answer we return. Since this is the brute force solution, it should be pretty straightforward, and I'll skip tracing the examples. Instead, let's look at the time and space complexity. If we let n be the length of nums, we have n squared for time, 1n for the outer i for loop, and 1n for the inner j for loop, which costs n operations for every iteration of the i loop. For space, we aren't using any additional data structures, so it is constant space complexity. Okay, we saw in the first solution that the time complexity was quadratic, so let's try and improve it. In order to get the intuition behind the second solution, let's look at a larger example. The first thing to observe is how to handle the zeros. Any zero is a hard reset because any subarray with a zero has a product of zero, and obviously zero is not a positive number. So we know that the answer lies between the zeros. Let's pretend for a moment that our nums array can't have a zero, and take a closer look at analyzing a section without a zero. There are two competing subarrays for the longest length, the subarray which has an even amount of negatives, and the subarray which has an odd amount of negatives. If we are iterating, and at position i, there are an even amount of negatives, this is the case here, where at this position i, we have encountered two negative numbers, the negative 2 and negative 1. We know that so far, the longest positive subarray that ends at i is just from the beginning of the array to i. We know that because if there are an even amount of negatives, then the product from the start of the array to the position i must be positive, and remember, we said that we are pretending that zeros are not allowed for now, so that is obviously the longest subarray so far. The other competing possibility is the odd amount of negatives when we are at a position i. So for example here, when i is at the last position, there are three negatives encountered so far. The negative 2, negative 1, and negative 2. So for this case, when the number of negatives is odd, we know that the longest subarray that ends at i is from this position all the way back to one position to the right after the first negative number. This is because if there are an odd number of negatives, then we know that the product must be negative. But if we exclude the earliest negative, then now we have an even number of negatives and the product will turn positive. So in some code, this can be summarized as an if else statement. If the negative count is odd, then as we said earlier, the best subarray that ends at i is of length i minus the position of the first negative, and we compare this to the existing best to longest. The else statement is for when the amount of negatives is even. In this case, the best is from the current position i to the beginning of the array. The i minus negative 1 is a bit weird, but it is because we should be inclusive of the 0 position in our answer. Let's keep pretending that there can't be a 0 and code up a solution under this assumption. We'll keep this if-else condition for finding the longest answer. We just need to keep track of where the earliest negative is and the amount of negatives encountered so far. That is easy enough. If the nums of i is negative, then we increment the negative counter, and also if the first negative hasn't been set yet, we set it to i. 
And that would be it if we didn't have to handle zeros. So let's now change our answer to handle them. As I said earlier, zeros are a reset on our variables. It is as if every time we encounter a zero, we just start over the process with a new array. Another way you can think of it is that we could break our arrays into separate arrays separated by those zeros, and we process each of those individually. So we are going to change a few definitions. First, we will introduce a latest zero variable, which is the position of the latest zero encountered so far. So for example, if I were here in this example, the latest zero would be here. And if I were here, the latest zero would be here. Next, we are going to change the definition of the earliest negative variable. It is no longer going to be the position of the first negative of the whole array, but rather the first negative after the latest zero. So if I were to be here, the earliest negative after the latest zero is here. And if I were here, the earliest negative after the weight of zero is this negative one here. Finally, we change the definition of the negatives count so that it is not the total amount of negatives encountered of the whole array, but the total amount encountered since the latest zero to i. So if i were here, then the negative count would be two for the negative one and negative two. And if i were here, it would be three for the negative one, negative two, and negative three. So now to keep track of these variables correctly, we need to make a few changes in the for loop. First, we need to add an elif condition to detect zeros. When we encounter a zero, we set the weightest zero variable to i, we reset the earliest negative variable to be null, and we reset the negative count to zero. In addition, for the even amount of negative cases, we compute the length from the i position to the weightest zero, as opposed to the very beginning of the array. So for example, if I were here, the negative count would be two, which is even. So I minus the weight of zero represents this distance, which is six elements long. So that's it for the code of the solution. For time complexity, again, letting n be the length of nums, time improves from n squared to n because we just iterate through the nums array once. And for space, we aren't using any extra arrays or collections that grow with n. So that remains constant. Okay, that's it for this problem. We went over two solutions, a brute force O of n squared solution, which we then improved to a linear time solution. As always, thank you for watching and good luck on all your interviews.